The ME2001 was designed in the mid-60s and was the first generation of broadcast colour cameras. The advent of colour was, was a major event. And that what made it possible over the black and white cameras was the invention of a much smaller tube. Um, the black and white cameras had a, a long tube, an image orthicon tube that was about that long for, for one colour, black, you know, monochrome. And suddenly they produced a tube that was that long. And can I put the side up? And if you look inside, they came up with a unique design uh, to make the camera as short as possible, uh, which was very important in restricted space in studios. So although it's big, it's front to back length compared with other cameras like the Philips, which they had the lens bolted onto the front of the camera. They took the view of this one. We'll put all the, t all the tubes, the, the, there are two, four tubes this camera had on that. So there are two tubes this side, um, and it's the red and the blue, and round here. You've got the other two tubes the there. The other two tubes there. And all the technology and all the servos associated with the lens, which is here, uh, are, are round it. And the reason for that is that rather than sticking the lens on the front, they left a hole in the middle and the lens slid into the body of the camera to make it shorter and more manageable. And um, we can demonstrate that if I... Hang on, take, take, take the off. Oh, off first, probably easier. Right, there you go. Release that. No, push up. <coughs> And, then the and if you, lens that's, that's the lens moved. package. Do you want to just lift it out? And, and you can it's see not there. exactly light. That's a huge, large piece of glass with the servos yeah. to yeah. drive the, the focus and the And zoom. as you can see, that the, that's the camera with a, a great hole in the middle. And this is a gas operated head which operates of pressurised nitrogen against the weight of the camera. You take the lens out, the camera is lighter. This will shoot up. And uh, has this. So we. It's now rebalanced, so we've got, this is um, an old plover pedestal, which is almost still operational. And the whole idea is that it, it, it moves effortlessly up, up and, and down. Um, the, the, on the, the studio ones, the focus con control... Oh, which is what this knob does. Is, is the, the focus knob is... is built attached. into the camera. Mm. Well, now it's high broadcast because you were often working further back. There was another pan bar this side and there was a separate box for it sat here. Yeah. The other thing um, on, on outside broadcast was rigging the cameras, which you can imagine it's quite a lump, but it was normally carried, you can either get four people, it had handles that came out the side, front, um, and that's in the way. Front and rear. Both sides. Not rigged, both sides. But as you appreciate, when you take the lens out, uh, all the gubbins, the, the technology of the camera, the tubes, the, the block, are all up this end. So this end was twice as heavy as that end. And, and they were and rigging in OBs. Th these would be carried up flights of stairs, um, dumped in lifts, carried on trolleys, uh, on a, a race metering or a football match. They would be, there was a lifting bag, a frame that, that clipped onto here, and they'd be hoisted up on blocks and tackles um, in a very quite a crude manner. You got used to it, you know, it was what you had to do. You know, the lens, you'd, you'd take the lens take out, the lens, lens out, would be in a box yeah. separately. So everything was, was boxed apart from the cameras. The cameras lived, you had what was known as the camera van, later known as the technical support vehicle, but we always knew it was the camera van. And it had side lockers in the side and a tray pulled out and the four cameras that were on your unit lived in those four side lockers. So between shows, they were bumped up and down the M1 or wherever we were going. Um, and it's, um, you know, they were not designed for outside broadcast, really, they were a studio camera. And they, they had a hard life on OBs. They, they were bashed around the country, they got wet, they got cold, very cold or very hot. Um, but generally, they, they worked pretty well. You know, they, we had problems, but um, you normally fixed it. If they didn't work, then you had boxes of spare boards. I mean, um, as you, you know, these, there's, there's lots of stuff in here. All these boards slide out. Um, so you can, you'd have spare sets of boards, but you had a, a good supply of spare boards that you, and you'd do it by process of um, fault finding, you know, logical fault finding that it, it, if, you, if you got up and the camera didn't work, it could be the, ca the fault on the camera, it could be a faulty cable, and these cables, uh, again, the G101, which is a massive cable that had 101 connectors in it with mains and all sorts of stuff going up it. Um, were prone to, you know, they, they were rigged through fields, was dirt, uh, it could pour with rain, they got wet. And the, the biggest problems were cables, you know. And, and um, so the fault could be the camera, it could be the cable, or it could be something in the truck. 
It could be time con very time consuming, but you had a lot more time. There was much more lead time in rigging because you had more problems to deal with. Now, get a camera out of the box, switch it on, and 10 minutes later you could record something and get decent pictures on it. That's the difference. The first problem you've got to make sure is that all the, all the tubes, all the pictures from them, all exactly line up. So you're not getting sort of any fringes or you know, horizontal and vertical. <clears throat> now that was something that the, en the engineers did. We, we, di we didn't. We just pointed it at a, a chart like this one here. <coughs> Line-up chart. Line-up chart, and uh, <coughs> so then you could see where, where all the with, with the grid, you could then they could then the, the engineers would then look at the cameras and would work out where they had to move the, the tubes in order to get everything lined up on top of one another, so that you got a proper decent colour picture. Mm. Um, Be because yeah. of the need to get all these images on top of each other, this was the first generation of cameras which came with a zoom lens. Zooms to us were bloody hell. Well, you're looking, you're looking at, a, at a particular object, and so you've got to zoom in, find the focus, which is the other side. You've got the focus knob on this side, so you focus on what you're looking at. You're, generally speaking, especially on outside broadcast, you'd zoom in to the tightest, tightest um, point that you were going to do, set the focus, and then zoom out again. And uh, assuming the lens had been lined up properly, then it would retain its focus throughout the whole range. And then you've got the, the zoom control, uh, in your, normally on British cameraman, it's normally in the left hand, because that's how it was in the studios, that was the pan bar, um, with the focus control there. This camera is principally the same as that, but we didn't have the four tubes. On this we had three tubes, using red, green and blue. And from the red, green and blue, we used to derive a luminance or black and white picture, which was the extra tube they had in that. But this one, it's all on one side, the works, this end, it doesn't go around. As you can see, the lens hangs on the front, which is like most cameras are, well, all cameras are today, you know. Light comes in, split up just by the prism, split up into red, green, blue. The lineup procedure is much the same as Robin was describing. You've got the tube focus there and there. So you you, you look at the same charts. This is a much more robust device. This still didn't stop it breaking. Uh, we don't have the... On OBs, we don't have the four carrying handles on this. This body would come without the lens. The lens comes into the box. And the body travelled on its side on a stretcher. Where you strapped it into a little frame, two handles at the back, two at the front, and it was carried like that. Zoom, normal... You would stick your thumb in there, zooms in and out, and that one's your focus. They're basically the same. They did the same thing, but they just did it differently. And we were better than them, and they were better than <laughs> us. <laughs> Friday night, you'd stick it all in the camera van. The camera van would drive off, and depending on what your rotor said, you'd meet it at Leeds United or Middlesbrough, do match of the day with the same things you'd been using in the studio the day before. Uh, do you rig it Saturday night? It'll possibly go somewhere else. Often we'd do a match of the day Saturday, good old days in City Varieties Leeds. During it Sunday night, it'd go back in the van and it would appear in Dickinson Road. Monday morning, well, it'd go overnight, appear Monday morning, and the different crew would come in and be rigging a studio programme. So th these worked a lot harder physically. This was the all, all purpose multi role combat camera. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, and yeah, the other thing so. is they actually used the same cables. If you're doing big events, you needed lots of trucks dotted around mini OB, you know, three or four cameras working into a truck, and then it would be radio linked back to the main scanner. And that happened on golf tournaments and big, you know, Grand National is a good example. Um, well, motor events, racing like Silverstone. Motor and, racing would and, have. And your major events like State Up in Parliament, mm. the Royal Weddings, yes, all, yeah, that, yeah, all yeah, these yeah. Big, big things. That we you'd, did all of those, you know. You'd we have did, units yeah. sort of bolted on. Mm. Mm. It was a lot more reliable than the black and white stuff we'd had before. Yeah. A lot more reliable. It was a progression. Yeah. 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 It, I mean, each generation's better. Yeah. The little things you've got there yeah. are better than these, which are, yeah. you know. I, th I think the difference is if something like that breaks, you've had it because nobody knows, it, you know, you can't, there's no user, fr it's not user friendly, you can't mend bits. But with these, you could take them to bits, you could take boards out, you could substitute other boards. 
when they did go wrong, you, there was a better chance you'd get them going again. Well, these are modular, darling. Yeah. Yes. Well, well light, these cameras, you notice the amount of light in here, were uh, much less sensitive. The same light's going in there, but you're splitting it up and using quarters of it yeah. to light four different tubes. Yeah. And this one, a yeah. bit better, because we've only got three, three. tubes. See the, yeah. So these were slightly more sensitive, technically. Uh, Outdoors was 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 bet was, you know you Better. God's light you you, yeah. you you did the best you could. Floodlit things were not too good because even with a lot of light, they don't handle low light levels. You know what's good to the eye a floodlit football match forty years ago is not as bright as a floodlit football match is now, and, That's right. and it'd it was, be quite hard work. Especially the lenses weren't as good, so when you zoom in, they would tend to get darker and darker and darker the further down the bit of glass you got. Mm. So it's just all progression. Mm. They're more yeah. better now. Yeah. And conversely, the other way around was that the director would be sat in his truck doing, say, a, a, a match at Wimbledon, and of course the light would be going quiet, slowly fading, and the engineers would be turning the brightness up on the cameras. So as far as the director was concerned, he was getting this, looking at the same picture. And he suddenly opened the door to go out, and he'd gone dark. As the light goes down, they open the cameras up. Um, maximum aperture, so the depth of field reduces. So it gives you it gives you problems because uh, uh, holding is focus holding his focus is is um, somebody Very would move six feet and it, 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 at sort of three in the afternoon it, it's minimal, but it, it's at nine o'clock at night when it's getting dark or in a, in a floodlit situation, uh, there's no depth of field, so right. it, it makes your your focus more critical. So your output is uh, you've, you've got to be. On, your on, the ball. Right on the ball. Nobody likes soft shots, directors or cameras. But there was nothing we could do to improve them. You know, it's just the physical get on with fact. it. Yeah, yeah. But it's the skill of, of, of producing good shots for the director, warning of things. You're the eyes and ears of the director. Obviously, we could hear the director, and that's very important. We can hear production talk back, we can hear program sound, you can react to what a commentator is saying. Uh, but also, if something's gone wrong or you've got a problem, it's very important you put the key down and you can tell the director or the engineers what the problem is. So two-way talkback was very important on OBs. I, came out, I, I started in studios, as most of us did. It differently managed because you did both. But in London, I started in studios, did three years at the centre, which was great for learning the basics. And, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't have missed it for anything. It was great fun. And I, but I always fancied uh, getting on the road and I got an attachment for six months and I never went back and I had 38 years on no bees and um, it was a, a breath of fresh air the whole attitudes the way even the management but the way you operated it was more like um, it was more like, it was it's like the, the arm thing again sorry yeah, it's, it's right. the team it's the thing, team yeah. thing the variety of things you did from state funerals weddings uh, party conferences um, um, every sort of sporting event, because the BBC had the contracts for just about everything then, and now they've got them for oh, not much. much. <laughs> but uh, nothing, but yeah. you know, you'd be doing cricket, football, gymnastics, uh, horse racing, motor racing, motorcycle racing, scrambles. First, I'm mean, doing you know a motocross, yes. which was yeah. a regular thing on Grandson. It was great fun, and little events, but they were they were. It was a bit more seat of the pants generally, but it was great fun, and the variety of it was was the thing that really appealed to me. It's just fun to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, it's not an yeah, excuse. Yeah. It's just fun yeah. to do, and we yeah. still do the old yeah, yeah. And you know, some of us are approaching seventy, and some of us are oh, seventy. 70. 70. Yeah. But it doesn't <laughs> matter. Yeah. As long yeah. as we can still do it, yeah. we would like to do it.